Well, here we are nearly four years later. The show behind me is finished. I know I haven't revealed it yet, but that will come fairly soon. I wanted to break down every single element of the show restoration into an individual video because I think that's the best way of organizing it. And so, you know, and that'll give you guys a better idea of just how much work went into the show. And so there'll be a video on the fur, the mechanical restoration of the characters, fixing backdrops, the building of the stage, just every single individual element that went into the restoration of this show. So to start, we'll go back to August of 2018 when I first saw a picture of this show and then nearly a year later was able to find that show and purchase it. It all started on August 17th of 2018 when my friend Kanan sent me this image. At the time, I had just started work on some Rockfire Explosion characters I had purchased from South Africa, and with the acquisition of those four characters, I was coming fairly close to owning a full Rockfire show. This has been one of my goals since becoming interested in the Rockfire just four years earlier. But even with this progress, I knew I was still missing a significant amount to make this possible. And after being sent this photo, I was pretty set on trying to get this show just because of how complete it seemed to be. But unfortunately, my friend couldn't provide any additional information. So this literally just left me with no information, no location, no indication of the time the photo was taken, though I kind of figured it was taken within the past couple of years. I just had the photo itself. For a few months, I asked around in my circles, and no one seemed to have any idea where it may have come from. I also got a bit busy around this time as I took my three restored characters to the Maker Faire in 2019. And as with 2017, a lot of people enjoyed watching the show, including some especially cool people. That summer, I also found some of the Rockfire Explosion characters that came from Topeka, Kansas, including the Mitzi that is now owned by my good friend, the real Sully G. In August, I met Tom Devlin, an amazing FX artist and owner of Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. But still, up until this point, no luck on finding that full show. My last resort was to make a post in an arcade enthusiast group I was a part of, but I didn't really expect this to lead to anything. And by this point, it was more than a year later, in September of 2019. I just posted the photo and asked if anyone else was a Rockfire collector like myself. And I had absolutely no indication that this would lead to anything. It was just a random arcade collector's group. But within a few hours, I got a comment from a guy named Scott. Scott claimed he had seen the show in person himself. I was extremely surprised, but still skeptical. So I messaged him. Immediately, he sent me 20 photos of that show, and it was clearly the same show as the photograph I had. I was in shock because I really didn't expect this to work. I mean, what's the probability that the guy who actually took this photo was in the same group that I was in? Scott was an extremely nice guy and we talked for a bit, and then he gave me contact information for Larry, who was the guy who actually owned this show. He was located a little bit outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He also relayed to me that Larry wanted a fairly high price for the show, and that kind of concerned me because I didn't have the money to purchase it at that price and didn't even really think it was reasonable. Not long after, I did end up calling Larry and I talked to him and explained to him my interest in the Rockefeller explosion and all the restoration work I had done. He did still want that same high price that Scott had told me and he explained how he bought the show in 1986 at an auction and he didn't just get the show, he bought a ton of other things like games. He was going to use them in an entertainment place he owned but he didn't end up doing that. On September 19th, after several calls of negotiation, Larry and I came to an agreement on price. This was a major success, and I was super excited that I was now about to own an entire Rockfire show. So I scheduled a flight up to Minneapolis and got a truck arranged so that I would be able to pick up the show. Knowing I would be in Minneapolis, I also remembered that a landscaping place actually had some characters in the area. So I contacted them, despite their Instagram post saying the characters weren't for sale, and I was able to make a deal with them. So I would actually be able to pick up two sets of characters on this trip. And I can elaborate more about the specific event in a later video. On November 1st, 2019, I made the flight out to Minnesota with my dad. We drove to pick up the show in the middle of nowhere on November 2nd. There, we met at a storage unit that contained the entire show. Everything was almost exactly as it was in the photo, but Fats had fallen backwards, smashing the plastic on the organ. It took us two hours to get everything loaded up in the truck, starting at 12 and finishing at 2. Unfortunately, we had to leave the original air compressor and tank as they were too heavy and large to move into the truck. 
With that finished, we headed down to Cottage Grove, Minnesota to pick up the other four characters. They were in extreme disrepair, but in the same condition as I had seen them in the photos. From there, we headed back to Missouri, where I would be storing and restoring all the characters. On November 3rd, we made it there and unloaded everything. I was able to take inventory of the show and found a couple of items I didn't even know I would be receiving. As you can see, there were two manual Billy Bob control panels. This whole event was really exciting, but unfortunately I had to head back home and wouldn't be able to start the restoration process for a few months. 